had found my religion, nothing seemed to me more important than a book. I regarded the library as a temple. Grandson of a priest, I lived on the roof of the world, on the sixth floor, perched on the highest branch of the central tree. The trunk was the elevator shaft. I would walk up and down on the balcony. I would lean forward to take a look at the passers-by. Through the grill I would greet Lucette Moreau, who was the same age as I and had the same blonde curls and juvenile femininity. I would return to the cell hour de pronounce. I never went down from it in person. When my mother took me to the Luxembourg Gardens, that is, every day, I would lend my rags to the lowlands, but my glorious body did not leave its perch. I think it's still there. Every man has his natural place. Its altitude is determined by neither pride nor value. Childhood decides. Mine is a sixth floor in Paris, with a view overlooking the roofs. For a long time I suffocated in the valleys. The plains overwhelmed me. I crawled along the planet Mars. The heaviness crushed me. I had only to climb a molehill for joy to come rushing back. I would return to my symbolic sixth floor. There I would once again breathe the rarefied air of Bell's letter. The universe would rise in tears, my feet and all things would humbly beg for a name. To name the thing was both to create and take it. Without this fundamental illusion I would never have written. Today, April 22nd, 1963, I am correcting this manuscript on the 10th floor of a new building. Through the open window I see a cemetery, Paris, the blue hills of St. Cloud. That shows my obstinacy. Yet everything has changed.